Hello and welcome. In today's video, I'll be discussing about Hamming numbers and how to write a Java program to check whether a given integer is a Hamming number or not. So first of all, what's a Hamming number? Hamming numbers are positive integers whose prime factors only include 2, 3 and 5. So we can say that 6 is a Hamming number because when you find the prime factors of 6, you get 2 and 3. And that's why 6 is a Hamming number. So to check if a number is a Hamming number in Java, let's create a Java file. So we create a file in our home folder with the name Hamming.java. Let's add some details through comments. So Hamming numbers are positive integers whose prime factors only include 2, 3 and 5. And so we can say 6 is a Hamming number because when we find out the prime factors of 6, we only get 2 and 3. So let's write a program now. So first of all, we will import the scanner class. This will be used for our user input. Class Hamming. Then we have the main function. Inside main, first of all, we will keep the scanner object ready. And let's ask for the number from the user. So in this line, firstly, we are using the next line function, which gives us the value in string form. And then using integer.parsint, we are converting that string into integer. And then it gets stored in this variable now. Now we have to make sure that the number is positive. So that's why if the number entered is less than zero, then we are going to give an error message on the screen negative number entered invalid input and then we call the return keyword so when we are calling the return keyword because we are inside the main function the main function exits and as a result, the program also stops. Now we know that the smallest prime factor that we need to consider is 2. So int p equals 2 is being taken here. And then we also take a copy of num in a variable n. And we take a boolean variable so result equals true. So we are assuming that the given number is a Hamming number. So that's why we are initializing the result as true. So assuming to be true, our assumption can be wrong also. So later if we find that if our assumption is wrong, we will change the result to false. Now we have to display all the factors, all the prime factors of the number. So we will write num 
is equal to and we are using the print statement here instead of println because we want to keep the cursor on the same line. Now we will run a while loop that while n is greater than 1. And then we use a nested loop that while the number n is divisible by the given prime factor p. So as long as p is dividing the number, we are going to print the number. So we are going to print that prime factor. So that's why we will write system.out.print p. And then we reduce n, n divide by equal to p. After that, we check if after reducing the number n, if the number is still greater than 1, that means we are going to have more prime factors. We still have more factors to be printed. So that's why we will print the multiplication sign. And then we also need to check uh, this particular prime factor, whether it is one of these numbers, 2, 3 or 5. So we will use switch case and we will put P inside it. And we will write case 2, case 3, case 5. If the value of P is one of these numbers, then we simply break out of switch. Otherwise, we will enter the default case and we will change the result to false because if it is, if it is some other number, some other prime factor, then it will automatically enter default and the result will change to false. Now, when this inner loop will end, so this will indicate that the current P is no more able to divide the given number N. So now we need to check the next number and that's why outside this loop, we will increment P by 1. And then again, the next number will be checked and this will continue as long as N is greater than 1. Outside this outer loop, we are now going to check the result, the value of result. If it's true, then we can print. So we will print using backslash n first because in the same line, we have first of all printed all the factors and then to print the result, we have to go to the next line first. That is why we are giving backslash n in the beginning. And then we want to print the original number. And we will print num is a Hamming number. Else backslash n num is not a Hamming number. And our program is complete. Let's check the output. So we compile the program and then we execute it. It is asking for the number. If we give 6, yes. So it is displaying all the factors and then it's printing whether it is a Hamming number or not. So yes, it's a Hamming number. Let's try with some more numbers. So 3600 is another Hamming number. So in every program, it is firstly displaying all the prime factors and then it is finally displaying the result.
Now, next, 5,832. This is also a Hamming number. Now, let's give 7,854. This is not a Hamming number. And if we give a negative value, it is displaying negative number entered in valid input. So that's all in this video. I hope you have understood how to write a Java program to check whether a given number is a Hamming number or not. Thank you for watching. See you in the next class.